Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to Hilal Live. My name is Faraz Patel. I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. And of course, we start off with uh, one of the top stories that happened yesterday, and that was, of course, the death of Professor Hussein Jerry Kovadia, who was an HIV AIDS expert and struggle icon who died at the age of 83. Kovadia was a leading pediatric immunologist and authority in the field of pediatric HIV AIDS. President Sol Ramaphosa described him as a leading scientist, health policy innovator, and long-standing activist. Joining us now on Zoom is the Kovadia family media representative, Judge Daya Pele. Judge Pele, good day, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good day, and thank you to you and your listeners and viewers. No, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Judge Pele, let's talk about um, the late Professor Kovadia, because obviously back in the days of apartheid for... You know, anyone, any person of color to even get into the medical field, there was that challenge. But Professor Kuvadia broke that barrier, didn't he? And really gave a true representative of how the medical field should be from an equal perspective. Yeah, uh, he was a very authentic person. Um, and his knowledge was organic. Uh, and it came from his life experiences. And it is, uh, it, it's all those experiences that he encountered uh, at university, discovering inequality, the separation of students between universities, knowing the quality of uh, education. And he himself said he had a reasonably good education, probably not the best, but it was his uh, his ingenuity and his intelligence and his remarkable capacity to take the best out of any situation um, and make it better. And uh, he was driven by the poverty, the malnutrition. Koshioka was such a big part of his early learning experience. And more recently, when he learned that the, the, the disease and malnutrition is beginning to resurface in South Africa. He was most distressed about that. So it's his life experiences that found an avenue through him uh, and expression into the work and the, and, and the angles of his activism that ensued. Um, so from those early days of discovering inequality, he said about learning more about it, he learned about the politics, he learned about communism, he learned about a better way of better ways of living. He went to India and discovered a different way of life um, and returned all the more informed about where his career was going, what he wanted to do with society. And there was never a moment in his life that he wasn't committed to public service. He encouraged everybody around him to do public service, including me. And um, that was his commitment. And he committed with honesty, integrity, and with the best intentions and the best interests of the community. Judge Pillay, talk to us about your, your personal friendship with uh, the late professor, and of course, how it started and how it really evolved uh, heading into uh, a democratic South Africa? So I knew Jerry Kovadia first as a doctor. He worked, uh, he held clinics at the Beecher Street uh, Clinic. Uh, but even before that, uh, I knew him as an activist and a leader in the Natal Indian Congress. Uh, I was an activist um, very young at the time. Um, and starting out in my political work, in the communities of um, Phoenix, uh, Chatsworth, uh, Asheville, um, and much later, Kwamashu. Uh, and Jerry was there. Um, if you'll remember the Phoenix floods mm -hmm. that uh, resulted, uh, I beg your pardon, the, um, the Amgeni floods that caused the people to, who lived in the valley to be evacuated and uh, moved to, to Phoenix. <laughs> Um, and the organization of building or the uh, co uh, uh, 
the conscientizing and mobilizing of people to form the organizations in uh, Phoenix and in Chatsworth. He was very much a part of that. Uh, he was instrumental in uh, developing health uh, institutions and moving the whole HIV uh, program bef um, that led to so many awards being uh, given to him. But you asked, how did I relate to him? Um, over the years, I became very close to the family. Um, our, my late partner, Yunus Muhammad, Zubi and Jerry, and the remaining N NIC people and activists post uh, democratic um, post the uh, post apartheid and with the advent of democracy, we got together socially and also engaged in discussions about what affected our work, our lives, our contribution going forward into a constitutional democracy. And then when my partner passed away almost 16 years ago, Zubi and Jerry were my backbones and they remain so. Um, Jerry spoke uh, and was the program di director at my partner's uh, memorial. And he was, uh, he had clarity of thought and he was uh, a beacon of wisdom. And uh, there was no, uh, in fact, for him, he said to me that his wor world was science and he understood the world through that lens, that it, it was black and white, uh, as clear as black and white. But when he encountered conversations with me and he realized that in a constitutional democracy, a democracy, mm. uh, law was something a, a lot more different. It wasn't just black and white, but there were gray areas to navigate to, which was much harder. Um, and he began to appreciate that. Uh, we had very deep conversations, and of course, he was knowledgeable on a wide range of topics. If I wrote something about law, I gave it to him to read. If he understood it, then it made sense. Judge um, Pali, of course, when HIV AIDS and, you know, the, the medication to obviously combat this disease had started to surface, uh, Professor Kuvadia was very strong in his belief, and this, of course, led to him and then President Thabo Mbeki having a difference of opinion in the way HIV AIDS and the treatment of it needed to be done, especially in communities that needed it. The character of, uh, of, of Professor Kuvadia was there for all to see, wasn't it, that he had a way on how HIV AIDS needed to be dealt with, and he was not going to move away from that. You know, uh, Jerry was a realist. He was a scientist. And he uh, he had the science behind him, and he was right. History has shown that he was right. You know, uh, and it also shows that uh, he was fearless. And when one introduces changes of that kind, when one introduces um, um, uh Medicine, and we, we, we discovered this more recently in the COVID experience, the pro and anti-vax uh, uh, debate. Uh, in the case of Jerry, there was no question of the authenticity and the usefulness of the, of the uh, antiretrovirals that he was uh, advocating for. And he had the world behind him. And what was the counter view. What was that supported by? If nothing, it had nothing going for it. There was no science behind it. It was just politics. And it was, it, 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 it puts before us uh, on a scale of who is right, who cared for the community, and who cared for politics, and who put politics before the community. I think that's a question that he would be judged by and the and the and his detractors would be judged by. So history has shown that Jerry was absolutely right in his um, science, in his advocacy for it. Josh Pali, one final question. Um, the character of uh, the late Professor Guvario was that of leadership, servant leadership, 
and making sure that if there were wrongs, there were accountability. Is that the leadership, you know, from a judge like yourself, from somebody who served in the highest courts of our country, is that the leadership that South Africa needs right now, the example of Professor Kuvadia? You know, if you are knowledgeable, you have an inner strength. You don't need to be arrogant. And humility is just a byproduct of a very strong person. And he was all of that. He was a person of integrity and humility. That's how I see him. Great love for humankind. Judge Tayapale, thank you so much for making the time for us to reflect on the life and times of the late Professor Hussein Jerry Kovadia. Much appreciated. Thanks for the opportunity. It's an absolute pleasure. There's Judge Tayapale, the Kovadia family media representative, talking to us about the life and times of the struggle stalwart. Now, after the break, I'll be speaking to John Cornick. Now, there's a way maybe load shedding could be mitigated. And that may start from the geezers within your house. But there's a catch to it. It comes with artificial intelligence. We're going to be speaking to John Cornick from Plantify. And he's going to give us an explanation as to how this can work. This is a 30-month study that has been done by this organization. Do stay tuned. I'll have that interview for you after the break. <laughs> 